So I don't have a lot of time to make these reactions. Again, I, I watched a bunch of them over like my lunch, my dinner, like free time in the car. I would just listen to them. And some people are really funny. Some people are insightful. Some people are serious. And even if everyone is loving something, I always try to find someone who hated it so <laughs> you can have a balance. The point of these compilations is I want to capture a snapshot of how people around the world or country or whatever reacted to a certain piece of media. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to have a balance. So I look for good, bad, funny, insightful. There's no like written down like formula, right. but that's what I look for. Three, two, Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reactiverse Podcast brought to you by Passion Fruit. I am joined today by a very special guest, uh, someone I've been very excited to have on for a while now. Uh, you might know him from his legendary, legendary uh, reaction compilation videos in the space. It is Johnny Odell, aka J2O. Thank you for being here, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Eric. I've you know, been a big fan for a while. I love your interviews, uh, your style, and you know, just happy to be here. Of course. Yeah, I'm happy to have you here. Like I said, uh, I've, you know, been in the space for a little while now, and one of the staples of the space has been your work, uh, as I found. Mm. It's uh, been Thanks. such a unifier. Uh, I've talked to you about this with the other people I've had on already, just how, you know, the biggest through line I've heard from people coming on here is their um, sense of community and wanting to build a community, wanting to be a part of a community. And I feel like the work that you've done has been a huge part in maintaining that and making it feel like this is a community of people, not just... Yeah. A space of you know people uploading things individually uh the reaction compilations i think brings people together in a sense of like oh we are sort of like this larger part of a whole of like people sort of sharing this common interest these passions um and the work that you've done over the years has been incredible thanks man i appreciate it of course uh so i wanted to prick your brain about that also you know as a video editor sort of the uh, internal process about like how you go about those things because i find them really fascinating especially how you've grown over the years and with the sort of, you know, yeah. tricks and uh, skills that you've uh, developed with the reaction compilation. So definitely want to cover all that as well. Great. <laughs> um, Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so to begin with that, I guess uh, I would ask, you know, how did you get into video editing to, to begin with? Sure. Uh, specifically with like compilations, I was working as the social media manager for The Walking Dead under the Skybound side. Skybound is the comic imprint that uh, distributed the comics basically through Image Comics. And I was tasked with just being their social media manager and I, you know, had to grow the Walking Dead accounts. And so uh, I've been video editing for a while. I, in high school, I went on this trip to Australia for a month um, and I recorded like a lot of like behind the scenes stuff. And I even did confessionals like real world style with my friends who were there. And at the end, we, I had a whole like sort of documentary uh, ready and people were really excited for that because, you know, Usually you just have like some pictures and videos after a trip. So I had kind of compiled all that into something. And that was probably the origin. I didn't really realize it then. But then when I was at Walking Dead, I needed some content ideas. And my boss, Brian, actually noticed that a lot of people were making React videos to The Walking Dead. And I think he always says that he's the one who came up with the idea. So I'll give him credit, <laughs> sure. Um, that he's like, you know, it'd be cool if you just kind of compiled these together. So I looked at other compilation channels. There's not a lot of them, but a few of them. And their style was just kind of, they put everyone on screen at the same time, which for me is a nightmare. No offense <laughs> to those people. I mean, some people like that. That's great. But for me, it's too much overload. It's like a migraine watching that. And then there's other people who would just use like, you know, two minutes of this reactor and then two minutes of this reactor. And I just realized that there was no like flow or rhythm. So I started making them for The Walking Dead. And the first ones are definitely pretty rough. And I think over time, I've evolved the craft. Um, but yeah, that, that's how it all started was uh, through The Walking Dead. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I actually I knew Brian as well. I worked with him for a couple of years uh, when I was working for oh, the nice, Schmodown yeah. at Skybound. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's so, right. Yeah, he's uh, Brian's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, as, uh, you know, as I've talked to people in this space, uh, obviously, I think everyone who is involved in this has uh editing 
know-how because that's how they start. They mm -hmm. start when you're editing their own videos and they get uh, developed skills from there. But there is a distinct difference between someone who just knows how to edit and someone who is a video editor, so to speak. Mm. Um, do you recall any point early on in your sort of editing experience where you felt like this is sort of a, like a passion for me, not necessarily mm. just a skill set, something I'm really interested in doing as like an art form? Well, I, I don't claim to be like a professional video editor. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do is very specific and pretty basic at the mm -hmm. end of the day. A lot of the reactions I still make on iMovie. I hope I don't get canceled by anyone for <laughs> saying that. Um, for me, it's just so much easier and snappier. Premiere, uh, I use Premiere on more complicated projects, mm -hmm. and I do like Premiere. But iMovie, just kind of, it, it's just the easiest for me. So right. until AI comes around and makes all that easier uh <laughs> It's just kind of what I use. Um, my fiance is an assistant editor for like big time shows. Like she's worked on American Idol and some documentaries and HBO, Netflix, all these things. So mm -hmm. she's actually a professional. Um, <laughs> I just do this as kind of, it still seems like a hobby to me, even though I spend most of the time of my week doing this. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to pick up tricks all the way around. Um, Especially, I, I use a lot of YouTube tutorials. A lot of people don't know how to edit. I would suggest doing that. But right, yeah, yeah, I, I'm still learning, still a process. <laughs> That's good though. I mean, I, the thing is, I used iMovie, yes, uh, well into my professional career. <laughs> oh, yeah. I eventually moved over to <laughs> Premiere, but like iMovie was, yeah, the staple for me <laughs> when yeah, I was, yeah. you know, for a long time. So no judgment here. <laughs> Lots of creators use iMovie. I just yeah. want to point that out. Yes, absolutely. The ones <laughs> that you think do not use iMovie use iMovie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, were there any projects, uh, I guess, prior to the Skybound era for you that you uh, may have that you think may have prepared you for the work, the reaction mm -hmm. compilations? Or was it something you sort of developed like on the fly as they asked it of you? Uh, well, like I said, like in high school, I did like a little documentary for my friends and we did like, you know, short. I've done short videos in the past, but nothing really. I was kind of making it up on the fly. I didn't really mm -hmm. know what I was you know, with Walking Dead, I wasn't getting paid very much. And I just, uh, they just kind of gave me the reins. They, I didn't really have a whole lot of oversight. Brian just made sure if I didn't like, you know, F up in like a huge way, but otherwise I was able to do what I wanted. So I kind of just picked it up as I went and it's now become a passion of mine. All right. <laughs> um, and, uh, was, uh, were you familiar with the reaction space, uh, prior to the Walking Dead, uh, and Skybound uh, work, or was it something you, div you discovered for that? Uh, n n not in that form. My uh, two of my roommates at the time uh, worked at Fine Brothers Entertainment, FBE. A lot of people remember them for mm -hmm. Teens React, Elders React, all of that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I was aware of React content, and those videos it would be like Elders React to Eminem, and it would have like twenty million views. I'm like, whoa. Right. And it was then where I definitely realized it was around that time that I started doing the compilations that okay, this React space, there's something here. People enjoy watching others react to something in a big way. Um, so then I just started doing more research into the React community. And it, it's a wild west. I mean, there is some drama. There's people who like each other. There's people who hate each other. There's people who think someone's a hack. There's people who, you know, idolize others. Right. Uh, so like any other profession, it's, you know, it's the whole spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. It comes with its own baggage for sure. <laughs> yeah. It does, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in those early days of, you know, trying to source out, you know, who's going to be in the video and sort of how you get, you mm. uh, adopt, you know, people coming in, uh, was there any sort of criteria you had for like what you were looking for in videos that you were going to put into the mix? Uh, well, simply when I first started, it was literally who came up when I YouTubed walking dead episode two Oh seven react and, mm. The first like 20 results I would just use and I can't just be using it forever. It, in every video I use between like what if is like about 15 or 16 um, all the way to like a Deadpool trailer, which is like 50. Right. And right. I now I know who everyone is for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, back then I would just kind of use people at random. And then I realized, you know, some people I would phase some people out. Uh, There's one guy who he had some problematic offline things. So he became, uh, he got out of the videos. There's some people who just, they literally like the whole YouTube channel and a no disrespect. I, I respect anyone who's brave enough to get, put themselves in front of a camera in front of the world and do something creative. I think that's awesome. There are some reactors though, that aren't very reactive, uh, ironically, and they will literally, okay, guys, we're going to watch walking dead 207 and go. And then the whole episode, they're just watching it like this. 
And then when the episode ends, they're like, okay. And that was my reaction. Right. And right. great. That's okay. You know, um, yeah. I'm not shaming anybody. But those people tend to not be included unless they had great picture in picture because AMC <laughs> yeah. is, in most uh, places, uh, most studios are very, lit- not litigious, but they're very strict about how much footage you can show. But right. picture in picture usually seems to be okay. So if someone like is maybe not a very interesting reactor, but they have great picture in picture, I might use them just to help fill in some gaps. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, and, and over time, you just realize who's good. Like, uh, I, I try to balance it with a good amount of insight. Um, so like the previewed guys, they're funny and insightful. Uh, P.W. Hustle, my boy, he is very uh, like loud and audacious and uh, very uh, boisterous. And he has very like, he, you get him for like, the big reactions. You, he's usually a bumper, right. you know. And then there's just some people, I, I recently, maybe we'll get into it, I did some rap reactions to the Drake and Kendrick mm-hmm. beef. And right. that was fun because I didn't know any of those reactors. I hadn't heard of any of them. And I definitely also balance the insightful people with the, oh my God, falling out of their chair people. Yeah. And yeah, it's, you know, you just kind of have to pick and choose. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a balance. It's, it's a, it's in itself a transformative yeah. piece. Um, I was talking sure. to like, you know, my girlfriend about this before, you know, when you're an editor and you're editing down things from a larger mm-hmm. source, um, you are kind of like, you know, trying to package it for a specific audience first, who's watching it and how that flows, you know, within it, within these sort of specific elements that you're pulling from. So, yeah, I can see how, yeah, when you're uh, picking people, like being able to have the interstitial moments of people who aren't as reactive be the sort of glue that holds other pieces together could be helpful <laughs> in that sense. Right. Yeah, no, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, once you started uh, you know, getting traction with that, uh, now, I guess uh, you might have touched upon it a little bit, but uh, today, say in the sense of like, you know, putting new videos together uh, for video or for maybe music, um, is there any criteria you look for uh, now uh, that now that you know the space a little more, now you know like the people a little more? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you want someone who is interesting. I honestly, there's some things that are red flags for me. You might be a good reactor, but if you do like a full reaction, that's like 50 minutes long, I'll usually avoid those. Cause mm-hmm. I only have so much time. Uh, I've said it before, but I do have like a nine to five and by nine to five, I mean a 10 to seven, <laughs> uh, job where I work for this mobile gaming company because I need, you know, insurance is nice. And I was demonetized for a while on YouTube. Right. I just recently got Remonetized, um, but I'm scared to death that YouTube made a mistake and they'll demonetize me any minute. So um, I got to keep my regular job. So I don't have a lot of time to make these reactions. Um, when the rap beef came up, I was like, I feel like there's something here. So I watched a bunch of uh, reactors and they have their own sets of drama and stuff, and they just react to music or they just react to hip hop and stuff. So I, again, I watched a bunch of them over like my lunch, my dinner, like free time in the car. I would just listen to them and kind of hear like what would be, who would be like the best for it. And some people are really funny. Some people are insightful. Some people are serious. Some people, and even if everyone is loving something, I always try to find someone who hated it so (laughs) you can have a balance. Cause I I think it's kind of lame if it's like, here's this thing, everyone loves it. Uh, it's nice to have one or two haters to kind of not haters, just someone who's like, well, I don't really care for that yeah. because the point of these compilations is I want to capture a snapshot of how people around the world or country or whatever reacted to a certain piece of media. Mm-hmm. So I, I try to have a balance. So I look for good, bad, funny, insightful. Um, you know, I haven't, there's no like written down like formula, right. but that's what I look for. Yeah, it's kind of feeling it out, feeling it out, you know, who, yeah. how they're complementing each other. Um, yeah. And yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the idea of like having a certain, you know, package of people at first and then like learning if someone did something, you know, uh, scrupulous off camera that you had to consider and things like that. Uh, moving down the line, you know, uh, as again, as you n- know more about the space, uh, it's difficult to stay on top of everyone's ongoing stuff yeah. and to be aware of like yes. who's doing what who's saying what um uh and you said like you have like a nine to five job that takes up a lot of that time uh so much uh, is there any way you stay informed about uh how you sort of go about the space uh knowing about you know who's doing what uh, without putting that responsibility upon your shoulders to stay informed 24 7 yeah i mean it's tough there's definitely things i miss but i try to i'm subscribed to all the reactors and i have notifications on for certain ones who i know cover a lot and so I kind of use that to see, even if I don't cover it, 
it's good to know, oh, um, anime is becoming pretty big in this community. Maybe I should look at that or Korean dramas. Like everyone was begging me to do Squid Game. And I was like, oh, it's a long series. But um, I mean, not a long series. It's one season, but they're long episodes. And Mm -hmm. doing the translation would be a nightmare. And I had to download subtitles, but it ended up being one of the biggest series I did. So I try to just keep my ear to the ground. But it's hard because there's so many shows that come out. Everyone wants me to do Shogun and Fallout. And um, I just don't have time. I'm still working on What If, which came out the first week of January. <laughs> and I want to be done right. with this show. I do. Um, but I can't. Ever, I'm a completionist. I got to finish it. Um, and we have the boys releasing three episodes at once. I know you didn't ask me to vent, but I'm going to vent for two seconds. Um, the, boys free, asked, yeah. <laughs> the boys is releasing three episodes at once this week on Thursday, which is a nightmare for me because I can do about one episode a week, especially one of those like hour long shows, but three, like by the time I release episode two, episode five will be out or four. And it's like, it's, it's really tough. So yeah. um, anytime they do a binge show, like unless it's Stranger Things, if they just release it all at once, like they did with like they did with Fallout, uh, I don't even bother looking at it. I'm sure it's a great show. I've never seen it. Um, I still haven't seen Echo. I can only I only mm-hmm. have so much time. I have a fiance. I have a dog like I got to, you know, prioritize my time. I can't spend 100 percent of it working on this. And people get Absolutely. angry and impatient about where is this? Oh, this other compilation channel did X-Men. They're lapping you while you were doing rap. Well, the hip hop thing uh netted me 15,000 new subscribers that I would have never had and two of the videos surpassed a million views. I mean, the last what if video I uploaded and I get it 6 months late is only got like 13,000 views. So what do you think mm-hmm. I'm going to focus on? Right. Um so at the end of the day it is kind of a business, but it, it is it is tough. I'd like to eventually grow and get like editors to help me, but right now it's mm-hmm. literally just me. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And I respect that. I respect yeah, how much work you are putting. I know it's what goes into that. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, and I, I kind of want to ask, yeah, like, you know, again, from an editor standpoint, um, this might be a little bit inside baseball. Could you break down the, the, the sort of distinct process you have, like putting the videos together into your library and like how you uh, piece together uh, the uh, videos itself? Like, do you do you watch each video one by one? Do you sync them up chronologically how do you go about piecing them together uh for the reaction compilation yeah um well i download the people that i want to use i download the episode and then i go from there i never watch the videos ahead of time i am editing as i go so i'll download a previewed video and i am looking uh you know i I go through it uh what really helps me is i look through the audio so I can see when no one's talking or if it's clearly just show footage, unless I want to use that show footage, um, I, you know, I'll see the peak and I'm like, okay, one of the preview guys said something, Adam or Jay said something. So I'll just skip to that. And so I, I focus mostly on dialogue first of what they're saying. And then I realize I can't use too much show video. So then I'll go back. And I'll grab a clip from like Previewed or PW Hustle. I'll expand it and I'll look for the show uh, clips that I want to use. So them literally just watching silently. And that's fine. As long as the picture in picture is good. I won't use bad picture in picture. I try not to. Um, and so there's got to be a better way to do it. For me, I, I edit a lot. Of, I'll edit like five or ten of them. And they'll just exist at the end of the timeline. Past the outro. And then I just start putting them in and then I start putting them in, putting them in. And then I look for themes. Like I look for, uh, you know, I I like completing other people's sentences, you know. Um, It's not just like if someone's like, oh, and then another one's like, my God, like sometimes it, it flows well like that. Sometimes someone is like, God, who is that actor again? And then I use another, pre, you know, another uh, reactor who's like, that's Tony Danza, or I don't know why I said Tony Danza, but, um, (laughs) and everyone's like, and then I'll cut to a third reactor, God willing, they're like, Tony Danza, that's who it is. And then people feel like it's all, they're all in the same room together. Because one of my favorite things, I'm that annoying friend that I don't talk through a whole movie, especially not in a theater, but if I'm at home with like a bunch of friends, um, you know, it's kind of like a riff off, like who can say the funniest thing? quickest and you don't want to overdo it there's an art to it um and that's what these reactors are they're the funny ones in the room who say something funny or interesting 
while something's going on. And the more that I can have them feed off each other, even though they're not in the same room, the better. So the more, and I, I'm really proud of that kind of work. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, that's something I've noticed, you know, develop over the years uh, with your work is like, yes, that sort of connectivity between the edits and like seeing them complement each other, finish each other's sentences. Um, I really appreciate that stuff. Obviously, that's you uh, inserting yes, some sort of, you know, art form to it and like having fun with it. Um, so I really appreciate you kind of like growing in that sense as well. Um, and then from there, uh, having, uh, you know, the process done when you're editing it and you're having it pieced together, uh, when you cap it off and like you, do you do a final pass on it to sort of double check, you know, what's, uh, you know, if there's something you can insert, if there's uh, I know you've done re edits, retouch ups of like inserting more people into that. Yep. Um, do you, does that, you know, is that difficult to put in with the flow of things and how it sort of was put together the first time? No. Yeah. I, I, I definitely do a few more passes once everyone's in and it's done. And there's sometimes where I am just like so behind and I just need to get it out. I'll the, it's I always do at least one final pass, but sometimes if it's just one, um, I'll upload it. And then this weird thing I do is sometimes I list, I'll listen to the video after the fact, once it's uploaded, like in my car on my way to work, I have a long commute and I try to hear if like the audio synced well and if it sounds good, just as audio, like if it made sense and then I'll, I'll, when I hear like a mistake or something, or this guy was way too loud, or they got cut off, or I accidentally repeated a clip and I didn't catch it in the first pass, drives me crazy. Um, but I always do as much quality check as I can. But usually when I'm done with a video, I'm done. Like when <laughs> one of the reactors, if they just react to like the Deadpool trailer, they literally turn on their camera, they watch it, they're like, oh my God, that looks great. Done, upload, and they're done. And it's done in like an hour, which is awesome. But for me, I'm going through over 25 hours of footage and it takes me about a week to do it. And, um, given that I have a life and another job. And so yeah. it, um, it does take a while. And so when I'm done with the video, I'm like done and right. I probably could give it three to four to five more passes, but one, once I'm satisfied with it, it's good to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. with you there. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Like, I understand like, yeah, putting uh, so much into that. Yeah. And when you're done, it's, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> it's just like it takes a lot out of you, so you want to be done with it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to get into the say now the the rap battle stuff that you were the few that you were recently covered. Um, what was that whole process like? You know, like you said, diving into a new, whole new realm of people and like you know the media and how that sort of uh, whole culture uh, stands on its own. Yeah, it was well. I'm a big hip hop fan, um, and I saw all my friends like all my group chats were like buzzing about this everyone was going crazy about the rap beef kendrick and drake i mean these are two super you know like they're just like on their a game uh to the best rappers alive and it just felt like it was getting bigger at first it was like little disses then it was a bigger diss and then so i was like and i saw and i was like i'm guessing people are reacting to this right like they do tv shows so i like googled it or i youtubed it and then i saw like dozens of reactions i was like huh well let me do this J. Cole one. Everyone's talking about the J. Cole one. And it only got like 10,000 views. And I was like, all right, well, it was fun to make. I mean, I liked meeting all these new reactors and talking to them on the side too. And then I was like, okay, well, let me, I did another one. It was like 12,000 views. And I was like, ah. And then, so I made a community note, a community note telling everybody, um, hey guys, I'm going to pause content and I'm going to focus on this because I feel like there's something here. And then this next one, Euphoria, mm -hmm. Ended up, I think it's at like 1.5 million views. So anyway, going through that, the process yeah. was watching all those uh, reactions, seeing who fit, seeing who didn't fit. I over like downloaded everyone's things. There's some reactors that I wanted to use and didn't. Um, some I didn't think I would, and I did. And um, yeah, I think each video got better as I went along. So that that mm -hmm. was just that was a fascinating process. But I'm glad I did it. And now I just did an Eminem one. Like I'd like to continue doing music stuff because you know i think people want to see uh more from me yeah uh, do you feel the music uh edits are easier in any way compared to the uh, movie tv show edits it's tough well they are easier because like you know a six minute song is a lot different than a 49 minute boys episode so but right, there's yeah. a lot more there's so much more nuance like when especially when kendrick like every line is there's like three hidden meanings so i mm -hmm. need people to break that down i need people to realize that and then, yeah. I mean, I'm learning as I'm going. I, I didn't catch any of this stuff and they got it. Mm -hmm. So um, 
it's really fascinating, but it is hard also copyright wise. Like mm-hmm. the right. two of the 1.5 million video ones, they got demonetized. Now Kendrick or someone, no one knows the full story, but Kendrick told his label, we think, to back off the reactor copyright stuff. Let them eat for like two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. And we thought it was going to be forever. But if you use more than five seconds of a song in a video, they'll claim it. Even if you're like at a carnival and they can hear like five seconds of a Rihanna song playing in the background, they will claim your video. Not claim it. They will like you don't get a strike on your channel. It's just you can't monetize it. Right. So um that's tough to get around. So I had a I had to pull some more analysis hip hop reactors to help fill up the gaps. And I know it's kind of annoying to watch. You just want to listen to someone like nodding their head to a song. It sucks to have someone like cut in every three seconds. So what Kendrick means is, you know, like when I listen to it in my car, I'm like, it is kind of annoying, but I have to do it to get around copyright. So in that way, it's a little bit more complicated, yeah. but I can get these out a lot faster, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. That's something I noticed too with the music uh, reactions is like the stopping and going. I think that's for the copyright reasons and to it have is. the analysis inserted in. So yeah. So yeah. like, did that inform your approach to it, knowing that or learning how that process usually is for a lot of music reactors is the stopping and pausing and explaining? I don't know how they do it. I mean, it's so hard. <laughs> um, I don't know how they make any money. It's so difficult. And they, Kendrick, it, Drake followed suit two days later. He also didn't you know copyright claim any of the stuff but apparently it was on a fixed schedule and after three weeks we all got like me and a bunch of other reactors they all got like emails scary emails Mm -hmm. saying we have you can no longer monetize this video and i was like okay well at least these videos have peaked i don't think they'll get any more views and each video has gotten like five hundred thousand more views so that's a lot more money that you could have made from it which is a bummer but i am happy that we were given that um but it's yeah, I mean, it, it's tough. Uh, I wish I could just edit it where it's just everyone like bobbing their head and I probably could do a version of that. But um, <laughs> I think some people do like it because I don't see a lot of people complain. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't realize that's what the song was about. Yeah. Um, so I like to inform people as well. Of course. Yeah. Um, and do you do you think you, yeah, you might mention you want to stick with music uh, to for some stuff or do you think you'll pivot back to the movies and tv shows fully or you won't have a mix of that it's gonna be a mix for sure Mm -hmm. um the m&m video is doing pretty well right now i just released it a few days ago and it's like already at 60 or seventy thousand views so obviously there's something there people like that and from what i've seen i I, there are compilation channels that do that and they definitely do the there's no commentary it's just straight through and they're not getting monetized Mm -hmm. um it's not just about getting monetized you want to make a quality video that people will enjoy you know right Um, it's not just for you of course. Um, you, you do have to be mindful of it. So I think it's just something I'm going to stick with. I'll still do TV and movies, but music, it's such a big untapped thing. Um, it's such a big genre on YouTube. So I think I'd be silly not to evolve and add it to my quiver. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so like, yeah, but staying up to date with yeah the movie and TV space as you've done for over the years, uh, do you have uh, any approach of how you sort of uh, see things coming down for new shows, I guess, specifically new movies, uh, coming down the line that might be big. Uh, do you, like, you know, we have the known things like the boys, house of the dragon, all that sort of known quantities. Do you have any, uh, uh, criteria for when you see a new hit show coming down the line of how you want to approach that? If you might consider it, if you might, you know, think it's like, are there any red flags you look out for, for like, you know, I might not want to cover this, so on. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at everything. There's a lot of, like I said earlier, there's a lot of shows I do want to cover. The Boys is obvious. Um, right now I'm in a situation where The Boys is going to release three episodes this week, like I mentioned. House of the Dragon comes out in a couple weeks. Um, and then The Acolyte, so that's a new show that just premiered. And first of all, t- for me to cover a show, I have to like the show. There are shows that I'm not a fan of that I'm sure if I covered, people would enjoy. And I know that's selfish, but I am essentially re-watching these episodes like hundreds of times while editing and I really have to enjoy the show so the first two episodes of The Acolyte for me and people are disliking the show for really like stupid terrible caveman reasons where they like call it woke and it's this and that I don't care about any of that I think the more diverse the better but quality wise it felt it wasn't really my cup of tea hopefully it gets better so honestly I was actually kind of relieved because I w- didn't have time for that. Like I right. still, I'm working on Andor still, which came out like three <laughs> years ago on my Patreon. And that's a slog. And the boys is something I definitely have to cover house of the dragon. 
I will try to do it at the same time. Meanwhile, I have two what if episodes. And so it really depends to answer your question. Sorry, depends on my schedule. It depends on how well those videos are doing. So I'll look at all the reactors who are covering this specific new show and see how many views they're getting. And if it's not very much, then it's maybe not worth my time. Mm -hmm. Um, On a business, on a business side, you want to think it's all creative and I wish I could cover every show um, because every audience deserves to have this kind of content where you can just see how everyone's reacting to something all at once. Um, But sometimes it just, it's just based on what time I have. So if it's a show that I really like, like I'd love to cover the bear. I'm thinking about it. I love the bear. Great show. There's some great reactors reacting to it. So that might be something I do, but we'll see. Yeah. It's also very short. So that's, that's also nice. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Show. These hour long shows kill yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, buckle up for that. Yeah. So for yeah. the boys, half the dragon, it's going to be, going to be a big one. Um, <sighs> And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, being involved in the space and like sort of being, uh, yeah, like sort of like focal point, I think people look to, um, I I, I talked to um, uh, a few channels, uh, you know, spoke about how getting involved into the reaction uh, compilation for your work felt like almost like a rite of passage. Like they said, it's like it felt like they had sort of made it in some sense, being able to be involved with those people. And you sort of bring them together in that sense. Yeah. Um, you've done interviews you know, for your Patreon mm-hmm. with some of your your favorite reactors. Are there any people that you say you see as like sort of voices in the space that you think are, you know, uh, you know, important or like, you know, uh, sort of bringing people together in that sense, the same way you uh, you do? Uh, interesting. Uh, let's see. I think your boy Roshi, he, uh, they have an amazing channel. Roshi's great. Um, I don't really know him personally, but I know he has a lot of other reactors, um, that he talks to and, uh, features in videos. Um, and that space I think is really well covered. Um, Kyle Katarn is a really good, I use him for all my Star Wars reacts. He seems to have like a really good rapport Mm -hmm. with all the Star Wars reactors. They all, uh, probably see i think they see each other at conventions let's see uh the previewed guys they had a live event during new york comic-con last year where a lot of their fans got to come and do like a meet and greet and i think that's really cool i love seeing reactors and influencers who aren't like the mr beasts of the world you know carve out their own sort of place in all of this and bring Mm -hmm. other people together i mean just reaction space in general a lot of times people just watch TV shows alone in their living room or with someone else and they enjoy it. But I think like that feeling where you're in end game and, you know, Steve gets Thor's hammer Mjolnir and everyone cheers or like in um, Spider-Man where, you know, you see Tobey Maguire come out of the portal and you get that giant theater reaction And Mm -hmm. those videos go viral because people remember that feeling of being that excited for something together. And that togetherness is something that people crave and they love being like, yeah, I I thought the same thing. And so, you know, I think reactors understand that. And anyone who can kind of capture that, I think is, I think that's a good thing. You know, the more community Mm -hmm. we have on YouTube, the better. Um, We all have, go through similar experiences, similar burnout and stuff. So, Yeah. I don't know if that answered your yeah. question, but no, no, I'm just that's kind perfect. of rambling. Uh, I never really get to talk about any of this, so I apologize <laughs> yeah, that these answers. No, please, are just yeah, I pr- I appreciate so that. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, the togetherness is like a big part of like why I also love the space and like the idea of yes, like sharing your passion and those like sort of raw emotions uh, in those moments and like capturing that uh, for you know prosperity. Uh, I, I think really. Uh, ultimately what the space does for people is it makes it feel like not alone like that's what a lot of people have said in their interviews like that makes it feel like you know these thoughts or these feelings i have you know aren't in isolation like i can look out there and know that there are people like that um especially uh alex winter uh who played um uh, bill from bill and ted he did a really great documentary recently called the youtube effect who talked about how youtube has sort of fallen to be weaponized for the wrong reasons for the wrong agendas um that's why i really love the reaction space because it sort of harkens back to that sort of core value of what youtube was made for which was to connect people which is people to find you know kinship among among uh, one another and that's why i really love it um and uh so I guess over the years, uh, how have you seen the space evolve in uh, certain ways? I guess, you know, for better or for worse, but like also just in ways that you, uh, that, you know, that pique your interest and, you know, the way uh, changes have impacted your uh, work for it, but also your passion for it. 
Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, there I have nephews and nieces who like, and I've heard of nephews and nieces or people's kids who, you know, when you are little, you like play pretend uh, as a firefighter, or a doctor, and a lot of them are doing influencer, which is interesting. You get six and seven year olds who are playing, they're talking to an imaginary phone um, and they're pretending to record videos. And so it's something that's definitely here to stay. So I've seen it evolve in a lot of ways. Uh, from YouTube to TikTok to just, it, you know, it becomes part of people's vernacular. I think people who write it off just don't understand it. And people are a lot funnier, I think, than they used to be. I mean, like, <laughs> I look at, like, old Vine compilations. I'm like, oh, TikTok's so much more funny than this. Um, so the generations, I think, are becoming funnier. They're becoming savvier. Everyone knows how to use a camera, a mic. Everyone knows how to create short-form content now. Um, it is it is kind of wild because, like, I do extremely long-form content on my page not like jenny nicholson long but still pretty long and <laughs> it's wild because there's a lot of there's a big audience that does not like that and they like they couldn't stick around for a whole minute on a tiktok video and i'm like that sometimes too i'm like right. one minute you know scroll um <laughs> meanwhile i'm like churning out like you know at least on the patreon side it'll be like uh 30 minute cuts of something so um People's attention span changes. Uh, the space has changed. It has become more short form, but there is still a big audience for long form. Um, you can one, watch a one minute recap of people reacting to Kendrick's latest disc, or you could watch like a fifteen minute like full breakdown um, on you know someone else's channel. You could watch a compilation of all that on my channel. Um, there's just different versions of everything, but I think the space is in. A pretty good place. I mean, it's getting, you know, evolved by the user, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in the space and the evolution as it is now, uh, the pandemic had a huge hit um, on massive. that, on a hit, but massive impact on like how that space sort of uh, exploded over the last few years. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any sort of distinct changes in the way uh, people have approached the space since then over the last year since, you know, everyone uh, started, a lot of people started channels, a lot of people developed uh, different uh, parts of their channels. Uh, have What kind of changes have you noticed since then? Uh, like I said, I think it's become a lot more short form um, mm -hmm. and I'm actually considering like making more uh, of my videos into like short form, like clips and because that's just where the space is going right now it is kind of mm -hmm. worrisome for like when i see comments like i don't know if they're from gen z they say they are um saying oh this is like a 15 minute video or something like that you know who has the time <laughs> but arguably everyone um yeah <laughs> I, i'm always looking for like new content to watch so i don't know um things are becoming more short form things are becoming just uh increasingly more creative um i think as ai Apple just had an event where they showed all the new AI ways you can like change um, things, change your content. So people are becoming a lot better at editing. And I think it's just making people a lot more skilled. I feel bad for anyone who I went to school for communications um, mm -hmm. and they told us as freshmen, they're like, by the time you graduate, everything you will have learned will have been will be obsolete. And you're like, then why am I paying however much a year um, to do this? So, yeah. but this generation is super resilient. I think millennials and Gen Z are very savvy with all of this and Gen Alpha, the alpha, you know, the generation coming after them, they'll be even savvier. So I think in that way, it's good. And we're getting a lot more creative people in the space. I hope it's not too many creative people where it's like, um, we're not going to have any more doctors or dentists, you know, in 20 years. <laughs> right. But no, I don't think that'll actually happen. Um, it just yeah. seems like that because that's the people who you see online. You're, you're like, wow, there's like a billion influencers. But, you know, I, I think it's fine. I agree. Yeah, it's a great outlook on, on the whole thing. I, I mean, um, I hope, I'm hoping for the yeah. best. I don't know. Yeah. Hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. That's all we can do. Yeah. Um, and to sort of start wrapping things up here, uh, I guess the, some of the questions I ask the other people, which could be applicable to you, um, what has been the most consistent obstacle you faced in your time with the channel, um, but also what obstacles have you seen people face with the channel that you worked for or worked with? The hardest part, and a lot of influencers will tell you this, is the like burnout of it never being enough. And you know, I've struggled with that just like in my personal life because you'll finish a video that you worked really hard for like a week on, and like I'll be like, oh, I finally got this what if out, and then you're like, okay, I still have two what ifs, six andors. <laughs> three boys, two acolytes. And then, you know, I don't, I'm probably not even going to do the acolyte, but a lot of that, it, <laughs> it never ends. 
And that's good because you always right. have content, but it's bad because you never feel done. And when I finish a video, I'll try to like take a day off after that. But truthfully, I'm always kind of preparing, editing. Sometimes I'll play like Madden while I'm editing and I'll give myself rewards as motivation. Like, okay, if you get a touch or like once you, after this quarter, then you can edit some more. Or if you edit the next five reactors in, then you can play two more quarters of Madden. Like I have to parent myself because sometimes <laughs> it's just like, I'm so exhausted. Like for my nine to five, or it's not a nine to five. Like when I'm in office, which is three days a week, I leave here at like 8.45 in the morning and I get back mm -hmm. at eight at night. And yeah. by then I, okay, now I have to make dinner and I have to, I'm catching up with my fiance, petting my dog. We'll watch an episode or a few episodes of something. And then I'm like, then it's like 9.30 or 10. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to edit now. And so the burnout's real. And it would be nice to actually, I don't remember the last weekend I had where I didn't, I wasn't doing something for the channel. And All so right. I think burnout's the biggest part and just time. I wish I had one of those clock stopper watches where it just pauses time <laughs> and you could just edit. But yeah, even absolutely. then, that sounds pretty exhausting because then it's like, what's the excuse? You got the watch, bro. Uh, <laughs> where's Fallout? You can literally pause time. <laughs> so I don't know. There's yeah, just no yeah, burnout. But I, thing, I do my best. Sure. So burnout's yeah. definitely the hardest part. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and how do you feel you've personally grown over the years with the channel? How do you think you've seen other channels grow have grown over the years as well? Yeah. So uh how I start like I started with The Walking Dead and then I got laid off from The Walking Dead during COVID for various reasons. But um don't worry, nothing terrible or anything. <laughs> but um that forced me to like just kind of take the concept and apply it to other shows and just see if that would stick. I didn't have a job. I wasn't making money. I didn't have insurance. And so I started from scratch while applying to like 20 jobs on LinkedIn a day. And um, the WandaVision episodes were getting like hundreds of thousands of views on this channel I just started. And that was wild. So um, I've grown. It's been hard. I've gotten demonetized twice. Um, I made a second channel that got demonetized and that was hard. Um, I was making the most money I've ever made and I've not really made much money. We're not talking like millions or, you know, hundreds of thousands or anything like that, like pretty middle class, but more than I had been making at my other job. And um, so that was really exciting. Then I got demonetized and then I had to apply for other jobs. And, you know, you're just forced to evolve and change your content. I was doing like on camera stuff. I did a few reactions myself, which I hate looking at. I'm, I'm not good at it. it. It is an art. People who say, oh, anyone can turn on a camera and react to something. No, you can't. It is hard. And I am a gregarious person. <laughs> and I love having big opinions, but it's hard for me to like watch like a boy's trailer and be like, wow, no way. Oh my God. Like, I can't do it. It's, I'm usually like, that yeah. looks good. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, music is one way I've evolved. I want to do more on camera stuff. I don't want to just be known as like a compilation guy. It's what I've fallen mm -hmm. into because those are the videos that worked, but I'd love to get yeah. into like more movie reviews and just like silly stuff, vlogs. I don't know if anyone cares, but, um, I started doing those like monthly recaps of like what happened in pop culture and politics right. and yeah. they get like 4,000 views. And I was like, I worked all month on this and, <laughs> but I, each one gets slightly more views, so maybe by the time I do the 2024 in review, people will watch that. I don't know. But that's yeah. been nice because that's taught. I do all that on Premiere, and that's taught me a lot of new Premiere tricks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to keep evolving, but you have to evolve, especially in this space, especially with copyright. And, you know, YouTube can change their laws or their bylaws in a second. So my channel used to be eligible for monetization. Now it's not. Like, um, I couldn't even get a silver plaque because I was demonetized at the time. And I'm afraid right. to ask now because I'm afraid <laughs> like they'll look at my channel and be like, oh, he has a hundred thousand subscribers. Wait a minute. Why do we remonetize him? And yeah. then I am <laughs> effed. So right. um you know, you do what you can. But like I'll show you. In the meantime, um since I didn't get the silver plaque, which is something I'd really hoped for, my fiance had this made on Etsy. Um, this like <laughs> custom made silver plaque, which I That's awesome. treasure so much and I think is even cooler than the one YouTube could send. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you evolve, you do your best, 
you find jobs in between and it's like how what people with kids say it's like you just make it work so i just try to make it work yeah uh yeah i mean that's that's fantastic yeah that the plaque is uh, amazing yeah <laughs> right i was like, I, I was, yeah, like brought to yeah. it was so sweet so yeah um yeah i mean i i totally understand like yes like the the highs and lows of like all that because it's 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 difficult it's difficult to sort of uh it is tough put yourself through that and then like yeah feel like you've worked really hard and then like have that sort of like you know pop up like short of what you were hoping for or hoping expecting especially that's just that goes a lot into the sort of creative passion or work of yeah. editing specifically because a lot of goes sure. into it um and uh beyond any uh, sort of monetary or financial value what is the most rewarding aspect of the channel and the space for you for sure um i would say the most rewarding part is just seeing people's comments where they're like oh i was having a bad day and this like helped me get through it or i rewatch your videos all the time and it's like i memorized them by this point and it just makes me happy because I have YouTube videos and channels that I go to when I'm like bummed out or not in a good mood or whatever. And, you know, there'll be SNL clips, they'll, the, the pitch meeting channel that Ryan George has really anything Ryan George does is phenomenal. He's yeah. definitely my go-to for like pick me ups. And the fact that, um, my channel, which by the way, wouldn't be possible without any of the reactors. Like I wouldn't have a channel without them. And I owe all my success, um, if you can call it success to them. So, um, but seeing people like the fact that my channel is what like Ryan George's channel is to me, um, is really cool. So I think that's like, that yeah. makes me really happy. Again, I, I, I don't want to be like famous or have like, I mean, zillions of dollars would be nice, but um, I'm not like aiming for that. <laughs> like, I just want to make quality content that will sustain me. So I don't have to have a nine to five the rest of my life because I don't thrive well in nine to fives. I'm good with me yeah. being my own boss. So anything that helps sustain that and makes people happy is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I will say, yeah. Uh, a small button on that. I will say I, when I watched the last of us with my parents and they liked it, it was a great show. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, after that I watched your reaction compilations with my mom and oh, she really loved them. Wow. And, uh, she, then that I, I did that to help her explain what reactions are and why I work in the space and how my job That's sort awesome. of influences all that. And she really loved it. And like, she wanted to watch more. So we watched all the whole whole series of your oh videos like that and cool. so when stranger things is going to come out we're going to go through and watch your stranger things compilations to catch her up thanks on some of that yeah those took so long yeah <laughs> the last episode's what two hours or something like oh my god yeah you're right <laughs> yeah it's like that, a feature that's film so amazing that you said that man that the fact you can share that with your mom i'm hope she's not too offended because it can be pretty vulgar um <laughs> no she, she, she i've shown my she, it's she loves weird them, she loves too. Them, yeah. okay good that's good i've yeah. shown other people or I mean, yeah, I'm, you know, I have a fiance and she has a family who's probably curious about what I do. And I'm sure they've clicked on videos privately Been like, let's see what this Johnny guy is all about. And he's like, what the fuck? Joel would never do that motherfucker. You know, and you're just like, and they're probably like, oh my God, what is this? Who is joining our family? Um, listen, I didn't say any of it. Um, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. That's really cool to hear, man. Um, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very special to be able to share those Shout with out to your machine sharing journal. Yeah. As <laughs> um, again, our, uh, we have our final questionnaire here, which I give to everyone, but I'll give it to you Let's as well. Uh, I think we can uh, still uh, enjoy your uh, answers for that. Uh, first question is, uh, what is your favorite TV show of all time? Oh, that's a good one. Um, the Office. Nice. <laughs> one of mine. Uh, uh, second question is, uh, what is your favorite film of all time? Ugh, tough one. Um, favorite film. Oh, that's going to sound corny, but um, I think um, Sound of Music is actually just front to back a great film. It's really good. Of course. It's a um, classic. But I'm also a big fan of Apatow comedies. So 40 Year Old Virgin, Super Bad, Knocked Up, um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Those are all that talk about a go to when you're feeling bummed. <laughs> that's, that's what I go to. Right. Uh, what stresses you out? What stresses me out? Um, I'm very mm -hmm. impatient. I'm probably like undiagnosed ADHD, as are most influencers. Um, what stresses me out is when something goes wrong or when things, uh, <laughs> when it, when someone drops a really popular show that everyone loves in one night, that stresses me out. <laughs> uh, when, when I get right. demonetized, <laughs> that stresses me out. I got. I went to see Fall Guy the other day, and I was I spent all week on this Kendrick and Drake video, and then right as we're going to the theater, I got like a notification 
because YouTube had been like, yeah, the checks mm-hmm. are great. Um, as in like, they, they check your work, not like money checks. And then yeah. um, they're like, oh, sorry, Universal claimed it. They're going to make money from it. And there's nothing I could have done. I was just walking into the theater. And I ended up not liking that movie, I think, because I was in such a bad mood. But um, so when things are like out of my control that happen, that kind of drives me nuts, especially when I work really hard on something. Sorry, this is a really long answer. Um, I'll just shorten it to that. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No, that's perfectly fine. I, I totally get that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the <laughs> remote notification. Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. Oh my God. Um what helps you relax? Um, hanging out with my fiance and our dog and playing with them outside. Going outside is great. Um, I recommend it to all influencers. Um, go outside, um, take a walk, um, touch grass, as people would say. <laughs> um, and, uh, what is a hobby or passion you have outside of TV or film? Gosh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I wish I could be like, oh, I'm really great woodworker or, you know, <laughs> I make shoes uh, I don't really have one. I, I play video games with my friends. Like my whole time is like taken. Like my fiance wants to go to a bunch of national parks, which sounds like a great hobby to have. Uh, we haven't started that, but that would be a good hobby. That would be a good answer. Yeah. Um, you know, we like trying new coffee shops. Is that a hobby? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't have time for hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> I play. I am really into <laughs> sports, so I keep up with everything like football and basketball, and I play games with my friends and. I love yeah. my dog. So, yeah, I say that definitely counts. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what fictional character do you think you relate to or just care deeply about? That's a good one. Um, probably Chandler from Friends. Mm-hmm. He is, um, I watch a lot of Friends with my fiance, Murray, and uh, Chandler is exactly me. Um, mm. You know, I'm funny when I'm uncomfortable. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> exactly uh what i try to be and um sometimes i'm a ross which is unfortunate but mostly yeah. chandler so i would say him it's good good mixture yeah <laughs> um what is your guilty pleasure show or film i love musicals um mm-hmm. i love musicals when i was in during covid we watched um to like cope with all the horrors of the world um we watched 90 day fiance which was super fun i <laughs> I've kind of left that behind since COVID, but that was a good watch. Um, but yeah, I'm a sucker for musicals. I don't know. Yeah, just you just uh, yeah, you just won the heart of my my girlfriend, who was a big oh, musical good. fan. And uh, Nine Day Fiance was the show that she and my mother bonded over when they first met. <laughs> so, oh wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's a good icebreaker for them. Nice. Uh, what show or film gave you your favorite uh, reaction uh, experience? Or I guess edit that you did like any episode or any movie that you did that really stood out um uh when uh what's his face um evan uh quicksilver when he showed up in wandavision that was huge um (laughs) just reaction wise are you talking about like what their biggest reaction was or mine well, you, your uh, your favorite experience, yeah, like putting that together, like you see the reaction, you think I I can't wait to like you know put this together and really you know sort of put this put my spin on this. Yeah, Quicksilver, uh, that was a big one in Wandavision. Um, uh, let's see, I was excited for anything Grogu related in the Mandalorian. <laughs> um, I was excited to cover that one good episode of Boba Fett when it was just the Mandalorian for an episode. Um, when Ahsoka shows up. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, the anything with Invincible, especially the end of the first episode, the pilot episode, where all the spoiler alert, like right. Justice League, gets brutally slaughtered. I could not wait <laughs> to do that. Um, in this most recent season, I was excited for people's reactions to Omni Man uh, leaving his wife for a bug lady, and then also having <laughs> a kid with her. That was right. pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, those are the ones that stand out. Yeah, I say I say that one of the best ones is probably the uh, running up that hill. Uh, the oh my Max god! And yes, things. that like, is the best one. Thank you. How did yeah. I miss that? That is literally <laughs> the best one. And go watch yeah. the extended cut because that one goes even longer. But um, yeah, that definitely. was that took a while. Um, I think oh, I got yeah. uh, claimed on that one too because I used too much of uh, you know that song. But I don't yeah. care. You had to. You know, I, I didn't need anyone did. butting in being like, well, actually, they're saying running up this hill because the kids are running up a hill. But also, no, I was like, I just need this to happen. I need to see people crying. I need to hear the song. I need yeah. the overture. Like, that was a good one. That was a good one. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember as soon as I finished that episode and like processed it, you know, shortly after, I remember the first thing I thought was, I can't wait to see like the, the compilation to this. And yes. See and eight months later, you got this. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got there though. Yeah, we uh, did. What would be your, what, for personally for you, what would be your dream show or movie to do a reaction compilation for if you could have people like join together and do it like just for you? It's like, this is your pick. Um, that's tough. I do watch a lot of genre shows, so it like I think most of those are pretty covered. Um, my favorite show growing up was Boy Meets World, and it'd be cool to see like I'd love to see like Gen Z or someone who hadn't seen it like react to it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it would still be funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'd go with like Boy Meets World. Anything where like what worked really well with FPE, like I mentioned earlier, was that you would have opposites react to opposites so mm -hmm. elders react to eminem so having like a gen z like i like those videos there's this one series where it's these brothers i don't know if you've seen it where they react to like hearing back in black for the first time and you're like okay i, I believe that they've never heard that and then they mm -hmm. like started getting popular and it's like we react to thriller for the first time i was like there's no way you have not heard thriller <laughs> like there's no way you've been to like a golf cart like or not golf cart like a bumper car place like an arcade a bar you haven't been to like you know a baseball game um right <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. i don't know it's just uh some people i wonder i was like are they hamming up that's another thing uh there's some reactors who i can pretty much tell that they've seen the episode ahead of time and i won't use them yeah you gotta keep an eye out for that <laughs> unfortunately it's sometimes it, uh, it can happen yeah they'll be like wouldn't it be crazy if Doctor Strange came out of nowhere and then Doctor Strange comes out of nowhere and I was like, bro, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's definitely a, an eye we can develop for, for yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. like that. A third over time. Eye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the final uh, question here is, what advice would you give to your past self when you first started the channel or just, I guess, when you first started working in the space in, in general? Um, I would tell myself to prioritize my life. Um, pretty equally with this a lot of times it's like it feels like it's like 80 percent editing 20 percent living so it's hard because i'm just always behind and i'm always getting comments of, where's this where's that what's this what's this you know and i'm like i am one guy and i would say the core like fans of the channel i think are pretty understanding and they're pretty patient which i really appreciate um but still even if you are behind even if you're going to miss the deadline and then the next episode's already out, it's okay. And I think I still need to learn this lesson is you need to focus on what really matters, which is the people in life who you love and just mental health wise, having time for yourself and not just always being on, 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 on. So um, even if I caught up with every show I'm behind on right now, there would still be all these other shows. Well, why don't you do anime? Why don't you do this? And sometimes so it would be prioritize your life and then also just be willing to let go. You know, I'm never going to end up covering this show and that's okay. So that's what I would say. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic advice. I think not just for you and your work, but I think everyone is to Yeah. I mean, we're now seeing life. YouTubers retire, which seems crazy. You know, YouTube is so young, but it's not, it's, some people have been doing it for 20 years, you know, someday I do want that, like that moment with Thanos where he like, you know, sits on his porch and he's like, Ugh. That sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's what yeah. we all strive for. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, thank you so much for coming on today. I really Eric, appreciate uh, been you a pleasure. being here, man. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Man. Uh, uh, again, it's been an honor. It's been an honor just to watch your work and to like sit here with you today. Yeah. Uh, where can anyone find you online, uh, YouTube, social media, or otherwise? Oh, boy. Uh, follow me, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe. It's J2O. I think it's at J2O2 because J2O is taken. Um, so do that. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Johnny O'Dell, I average about three likes per post. So it's pretty popping over there. Um, definitely <laughs> recommend. That, that's another <laughs> weird thing. I'll get like three likes on a tweet that I thought was okay. And then if I do like a community note on YouTube, it's like, you know, 2,000 likes. So it's Twitter yeah. just humbles me, you know, it's nice. Everyone should be humbled <laughs> a little bit. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Follow me on that. Uh, of course, uh, you can find me at Nerdchronic across social media. You can find us at Passion Fruit for us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that great place. Uh, you can find us here on YouTube if you're like, uh, sorry, 
If you're finding us here on YouTube, please like and subscribe and share all the good stuff. You can subscribe to the Patrick Fruit newsletter where we have news and coverage on uh, social media uh, events and coverage every day. Uh, also, we have the, our Patch Fruit Discord that you can find the, the links below. And also our Patch Fruit Patreon where we have these episodes up a week early and also exclusive interviews with other creators as well. And we'll catch everyone on the next episode.